Good morning, students. How are you all? So all are fine. I hope all are fine. The previous class we had completed the portion bryophytes. Am I correct? Economic importance of algae and classification of algae and the second plant group bryophytes. Am I correct? So the element of the portions only prepared, learnt. That's the last class. Am I correct, children? Yes. So today's class we are going to learn about that's the next plant group pteridophytes. Clear? What is pteridophytes? What is pteridophyte means? So this is the first true land living plants. Clear? The first true land living plants. So that is called the name is known as pteridophytes. Clear? This pteridophyte members, so they occur in that cell vascular tissues. The vascular tissues means xylem, phloem. So these are the vascular tissues of the so, presence. So this is the first the developing in the vascular tissues of this pteridophyte locus. So that's why we are called that a vascular cryptogamy. Okay. So that is the bryophyte locus or they call the name is known as vascular cryptogamy. Understood children? Yes. So the next one. What are the pteridophyte? What are the characteristic features? Means mostly so this is the plants are very very smallest herbaceous and moisty so that one is they grow in that is the very cool and the shady places wherever that's the water is available that regions only the bryophyte members are growing clear then bryophyte members so they are calling that is vascular cryptogamy why they are calling that is vascular cryptogamy very good they develop in that is the vascular tissues so that's the vascular tissues like xylem and phloem. So that's why, so this one is called, its name is known as vascular cryptogamy. Mostly, so this one is the period, it's a deponian period. So that's a paleozoic era. So that's a 400 million years ago. So these species are available in that world. Clear? Yes. What are the plant examples? So they belong to this group space. So there comes under in a clubmoss, hasting, quillworts, and waterfalls, tree ferns. So these are the certain examples: waterfall, tree ferns, and it's a clubmoss, and then it's a hasting. So these are the certain examples of the species. They belong to this pteridophyte members. Clear, children? The next one we are going to learn about is the general characteristic features of pteridophyte members. The general characteristic features of pteridophyte members. First of all, the plant body is the sporophyte. The plant body is a sporophyte, means that's a sporophyte region. The sporophytic phase is the dominant one. So there is the differentiated into root, stem, and leaves. That's a clearly differentiated the sporophyte is a root, stem, and leaves. Clear? Then the roots are they come under in a adventitious roots and then the stem is they come under in a monopodial and dichotomous so single and then so that's a branch with stems or they present in this pteridophyte members. The leaves are they present in a microphyllous and megaphyllous. So this is one of the special leaves they present in the dispose regions. So that is the special one of the general characteristic features they found in that's a pteridophyte members. Understood children? Yes. The next one is steel. What do you mean by steel? The steel means, so what does that steel means? The central cylinder, so that's a vascular tissues formation is no. So there, central cylinder of vascular tissues, they are consisting of a xylem, phloem, pericycle and also in some times they are present in a medullary with pith rings are present. Okay, the medullary ray with that's a pith is present. So that is we are called, the name is known as a steel. What does the steel? That's one of the two more questions, children. So the steel is a central cylindrical vascular tissues. That vascular tissues they containing in a xylem and phloem. So very cycle also. In some cases, some conditions, so they are present in a medullary veins with the what cytom is present? The pith also present. Clear? So that is we are called the name is known as steel. Clear? Next, so the steel is they comes under in a two type of steel. 
one is protostyle and another one is siphonostyle okay protostyle and siphonostyle protostyle means so the xylem is present they surrounded by that's a phloem element clear yeah? that is protostyle then siphonostyle means the xylem is there they surrounded by phloem but central region the pith is present clear yeah? that is known as siphonostyle these are the two type of the steel is present in the pteridophyte members so here most of the cases they present in a protostyle in some cases only they present in a siphonostyle one of the good examples of this is some forms of this siphonostyle condition that's the example of the species is a marsilia clear children are you understood now so what are the two type of the steel very good protostyle and siphonostyle okay then siphonostyle example is the this one has the very few conditions only they present in a siphonostyle this is most of the species they present in a protostyle condition clear this is siphonostyle that's the example of the species is the marsilia clear yes next one tracheids so that is the pteridophyte members mostly that's a water conducting element is the tracheids but in one of the example of the species the pteridophyte members selaginella their water conducting elements they present in the vessels so if you have learned that is the xylem and the phloem elements so there you have to be learn about these are the sub types of the xylem elements tracheid vessel trachea so these are the sub types of the xylem elements understood children but tracheid is the major one of this water conducting elements but in that selaginella species their water conducting elements they are present in they found in the vessel cells understood ma yes the next one is we are going to learn about the next characteristic features of this pteridophyte members sporophyll what is mean by sporophyll the sporangium the sporangium they are producing in a spores so that the spores are they present inside in a bag like structures clear that bag like structures they born on that is one of the special leaves okay that's one of the special leaves that is we are called the name is known as sporophyll clear children so once again what is sporophyll one of the two more question children so here that's a sporangium development is happening at that time the spores so they bearing in one of the bag like structure that is born on a one special leaf that is we are called the name is known as sporophyll clear then after that this sporophyll is get organized into cone and strobilus formation cone and strobilus formation cone or that is the strobilus strobilus formation is present in this one understood ma so this is the one of this tumor pusti what is sporophyll okay the next one this pteridophyte members they produces in a two type of the spores children one is homosporous condition and another one is heterosporous condition already you know this from this word you have to be write this one homosporous only one type of the spores are producing so that is we are called that is homosporous clear heterosporous means in this type so they present in a two different type of the spores are producing in a pteridophyte member so that is we are called that is heterosporous clear homosporous only one type of spores are producing heterosporous two type of the spores are producing that's we are called the heterosporous each one you have to be quote that's one one example children homosporous condition example lycopodium heterosporous condition that's the example as selaginella clear so this is the one of this type of the special spores are developing in a pteridophyte members understood the next one is development of the sporangium the sporangium they are comes under in a two types of them one is eusporangium and another one is the leptosporangium So what does mean by use sporangium means? So here the development of the sporangium, the group of the initials they develop it means that is we are called the use sporangium. Understood? Suppose there is a sporangium cells, they divide in a periclinal means they they divide into two. One is the outer layer, so they are present in a jacket layer. Okay, the jacket is sporangia, and then at the, another one is so they are producing in a archisporium. Initials, clear. So these are the group initials they are forming in this one means the group of this initial the development of the sporangia is called the use sporangia. Clear. Leptosporangia means so that's the development of the sporangium. The 
developed from a single initials. Clear? This is group of initial, this is single initial. So these are the two types of the development of the sporangium that are formed in this pteridophyte members. Understood children? Say yes or no? Yes. What are the two types of this sporangiate development? Very good. Eusporangiate and leptosporangiate. Leptosporangiate. Clear? Which one is the development of this sporangium from the group of initial? Very good. Eusporangiate. Single initials developing with sporangia? Leptosporangiate. Understood? Yes. The next one is. So that's a spore mother cell. So the here that's a diploid condition of the spore mother cell. That one is they undergoes this meiosis cell division. Okay, undergoes this is the meiosis cell division. They develops into that's a spores. That's a spores for the reduction division. Here they takes place in a reduction division after we are getting in that's a haploid condition of the spores. Understood now? The next one of this general characteristic features of this pteridophyte numbers, prothallus. What is prothallus? Another one of this two mark question. Already you learn about that's one of the two mark question. What is the score of fill? Second one question is coming. What is prothallus? The prothallus, the spores are germinating. Okay? So at that time, the spores are they germinating. The spores are they germinating. At that time, they producing in a haploid multicellular green Cordate shape. Cordate shape means so this like shapes. That this like shapes. So that is we are called cordate shapes. Cordate. Cordate shapes. Okay. Cordate shapes. So these are the structures. They are developing independent gametophytes called the name is known as prothallus. Understood? What is prothallus? The spores or they germinate to producing in a haploid multicellular green Coordinate shape of independent gametophyte as we are called the name is known as prothallus. Clear? The next one is different type of reproduction as takes place in the pteridophyte members. First one is vegetative reproduction. The vegetative reproduction that one is they takes place in the cell. The types of fragmentation and root tubers, adventitious buds. So these are the different types of this methods, the different types that one is they helping in a vegetative reproduction of the pteridophytes numbers. Okay? The next one is sexual reproduction. Mostly the sexual reproduction is they comes under an oogamous type children. That's oogamous type means so here they are producing in a two type of the sex organs children. One is that's a male is the antheridium. They produce us in an antheridium and female is that produces in an archegonium. Clear? So this for two sex organs, that is the, this one is the male sex organ, this one is the female sex organ. So these two sex organs, they are produced from the prothallus region. Understood children? So these two are, they produced from the prothallus region. Understood? Yes. Then what about the characteristic features of antheridium? Okay. So the from this is the antheridium. What is the, how will you be producing this? The androsovoids means. So that is a spirally coiled. What is the characteristic features of antheridium? The spirally coiled multiflagellate androsovoids are they produced from this antheridium. And archegonium, so there that's a flask shaped like structures. So these flask shape they present in a two region children. One is venter and neck regions. Okay. The venter means one oval shape of this area. And another one is that's a neck region is present. So that's a broad, that's a vendor region and this is a one of this elongated, narrow like nature of this neck region is present. Yeah. Then what are the things are consisting in these two regions, vendor and neck region? Venter they possess that egg and ova. Okay, our venter they consisting of oocytum. Ah, very good. Egg and ova. Neck region they consisting of this neck canal cells are present. Clear? So these are the items they present in this archegonium that is a female reproductive organs. Clear children? Yes. The next one, for this fertilization of the steridophyte numbers, what is essential for this fertilization process? Understood children? The next one is apogamy and apospory. So what does mean by apogamy and apospory means? So here, 
the pteridophyte members, this is the two type of this, that's a conditioners are showing in this one children. Right? What is meant by aposporin means? So that is the development of the sporophyte. They without fusion of the male and the female gametes. In that time, they arise directly from the gametophyte region. So in this condition, the sporophyte is haploid in nature. Okay, in this condition, the sporophyte is a haploid in nature. That is the type is we are called apogamy. So if you listen, in the development of the sporophyte, without fusion of the male and the female gametes, so that one directly they produces in the gametophyte. But if the sporophyte is the which condition? Normally the sporophyte is diploid condition. But here that is the sporophyte is the haploid condition. Here, yeah? so that is we are called the apogamy. Then pteridophyte members also show they shows that another one condition is the apospore. What does mean by apospore means? The development of the gametophyte, any of this vegetative cells, that's a sporophyte other than that's a haploid spores. Okay? Other than that is a haploid spores. So here there is a without formation of the spores children. Clear? Without formation of the spores. So that is the pteridophyte, one of this very one type of they expressing in the aposporic conditions. So these are the two special characters they showing in this pteridophytes numbers. Understood? Apogamy and aposporic. Understood children? Say yes or no? So these are the certain general characteristic features of pteridophyte. In some times they will ask that if I am not questioning, write any five points about that uh, pteridophyte general characters. In some times they will ask that is a small two more questions. Sir. Small question, what is a sporophyll and what is prothallus and then what is apogamy and what is aposporin. So these are the questions in sometimes they will ask. And also sometimes they will ask that can you differentiate these two terms, use parangiate and leptosporangiate. Then define what is homosporous and what is heterosporous. So this like you have to be prepared. Clear? So these are the some sort of two more or three more questions. So I have dealt that you are just model only, so you have to be prepared for these patterns. Understood children? Say yes or no ma? Yes. The next two ones we are going to learn about that is the economic importance of pteridophytes. So that is the next one as we are going to learn about that is the economic importance of pteridophytes. Just before we are going to learn about that is the economic importance, we have learned that is another one more thing children. Right? What is the classification of pteridophytes? The classification of pteridophytes, so that is the post, that's the person name is known as Rainian. Okay? So that's the person name is known as Rainian. So that person only they propose this classification of pteridophytes. Okay? Classification of pteridophytes. So which person they propose that's a classification of pteridophytes? Rainian. So this person only they classified that's a pteridophyte numbers in the year of 1954. So that person they are classified into five subdivisions, right? What are the five subdivisions? Siloptisa and Siloptisida, Lycopsida, Spenoropsida, Tiropsida. Yeah? Silophytopsida, Silophytopsida, Siloptisida. Lycopsida, Speneropsida, Tiropsida. Clear? So these are the five subdivisions they are comes under to classify in this person. Clear? So in this pteridophyte numbers, so they comes under in a 19 orders. How many families are they comes under in this group pteridophyte numbers? Means 48 families are present. Understood children? Say yes or no? Yes. The next one we are going to learn about that is the economic importance of pteridophytes. The economic importance of pteridophytes, if you are going to learn about this economic importance, please all of you take your textbook children. So many names are coming, the preophyte, sorry, pteridophyte members. So you have to be, see your textbook and learn one by one. Clear? The economic importance of pteridophytes, so that is they comes under in a many uses. Certain species are we are using in our food, 
certain species we are we can using in that bio fertilizer some of them they are using in ornamental plants and some of them they are using in that dye preparation so these are the sort of beneficial activities so they we can use it for this from the theridophyte members or theridophyte species clear yes let us learn one by one first one is rumora adiantiformis rumora adiantiformis so this is the they commonly we are called that's a leather leaf fern okay so leather leaf fern so that's a species name is that one so that's a uses as cut flower arrangements so bouquet preparation so these and all the things they are using for this items the next one is one of the example of the steridophyte mumbos marshelia this marshelia that is producing in a sporocarpus that sporocarpus we are using as a food mostly this one is they using for that food is the tribal peoples okay that persons only they began using in that is the marshelia sporocarp they used as a food clear azola that's one of this very good examples for this bio fertilizer in that paddy field so they are we are using in that is a one of this fertilizer so that's a example of the species snake teridophyte mumbos is a azola the next one is triopteris triopteris so that is the treatment of tapeworm tapeworm means so that's a sudden preparation of this vermifuge drug that preparation we can using this species triopteris The next one is Teres vitata. So this one species very good on at the examples. The removal of heavy metals. So that's a heavy metals or they presence in the soil, you know, bio remediation. That process we can using this species Teres vitata. Clear? The next one is Teridium species. So from the leaves region, this is the Teridium species. From the leaves part, we are getting in a one of this green dye. Okay, that's dye preparation. We can using in that uh, species of the species from the species we will uh, take it in that uh, leaf part. We can using in that preparation of dye. Clear? Then you can see them. This is the stem. So that one is they removing this uh, dirty things. Okay, the removal of this dirty things. That's we can we can using in that uh, species of you can see them. Clear children? Say yes or no? Yes. Next one. Some of the species we can using in uh, ornamental plants. Silotum, Lycopodium, Salaginella, and the another one is Maratha. Okay, Salaginella, Lycopodium, Silotum. Sometimes they will ask that is the three more question means they will accept it to right will accept the three species names. Sometimes two more means they will accept that is only two species. Okay, the easiest species names only you can learn. Silotum, Lycopodium, Salaginella. And angiotris. Okay, so these are the certain species we can using in a ornamental plants. Understood, children? Say yes or no? That's a sometimes they will ask that the final question. Economic importance of teredophytes. Please, all of you, go through this question. Five more based. Clear? So many economic importance are coming. That's a teredophyte, bryophytes, algae. So many species. The plant, each plant kingdoms they have that's a economic value. Clear, children? Yes. So the next two of us, we are going to learn about that. Sir, next to topic types of steel. Okay, types of steel. Of what is steel, children? What is steel? What is steel? Very good. Central cylinder of vascular tissues. The vascular tissues means already you know from the lower classes itself we learned that the vascular tissues xylem and phloem. Am I correct? The xylem and phloem. And also they are present in the pericycle. Sometimes they are present in the medullary rays with the pith also present. Clear? Medullary rays with the pith. So that is we are called that's name is known as steel. What is steel? Two more questions. What is steel? Clear? The two type of the steel one is proto steel and another one is siphon steel. What I mean by proto steel? Already I taught this one. What does mean by proto steel children? Very good. Phloem surrounds that is xylem. Am I correct? The phloem surrounds that is xylem. Our xylem is surrounded by a phloem. Am I correct? So that is known as proto steel. Clear? Siphon steel means xylem surrounded by phloem. The central region what one is present? Pith. Very good. So yeah, the central region so they present in a pith. So that is we are called the name is known as Siphon steel. These are the two major steels. They are present in that one. Clear? 
The next one is the protostelis they comes under in these four types are right. Siphonostel also they comes under in these are the following types. Okay. First one let us learn that is one by one. Protostel already know that is what does mean by protostel. The next one is haplostel. What does mean by haplostel? Similarly this is the answer only they are coming in right. What does mean by haplostel? It means the xylem surrounded by phloem. So that is we are called the name is known as haplostate. Okay. The xylem surrounded by phloem. So that is known as. So if you see this diagram children. What does mean by haplostate? That is a xylem. So that is a central region. Okay. The xylem that is surrounded by a phloem. That is we are called the name is known as haplostate. That is one of the good example of the species is the selaginella. Clear? The next one is actinostate. So here that is a star shape of the xylem. That is a surrounded by a phloem elements. So this type of the steel is we are called the name is known as actinostate. Clear? The star shape of this xylem elements that is surrounded by a phloem elements. That's we are called the name is known as actinostate. This one is good example is a Lycopodium serratum. That's one of the species name of pteridophyte compost. Lycopodium serratum. Clear children? Say yes or no? The next one, what does mean by plectostate? Plectostate means the xylem plates. So here, the xylem plates alternate with the phloem plates. Xylem plates, xylem means, so that's a representation of this red color. Clear? The xylem plates alternate with the phloem plates. Okay? So that's the type of the steel as we are called. That's name is known as plectosteel. Clear children? Say yes or no? Xylem plates alternate with the phloem plate is known as. That's the type of the steel is known as plectosteel. Example, the son of the teridophyte members, Lycopodium clavatum. Lycopodium clavatum. Am I correct? Yes. Next one. Mixed protocell. Mixed protocell, there is not given that is a diagram, children. Right? So, here, that is a mixed protocell. The xylem groups is uniformly, that is very, very important. The xylem groups are uniformly they scattered on the phloem. Okay? Just imagine phloem elements is there, means that is a, this is the phloem elements. Am I correct? This is the green part. So, that is a phloem element. The phloem elements, so that is. The xylem groups wise, the uniform groups wise that is scattered in the phloem, that's we are called, that's name is known as mixed protosy. That's one of the good example that says name is Lycopodium serranum. Lycopodium serranum. Clear children? So these are the different types they come under in a protosy. What are the types names children? What are the subtypes they come under in a protosy? Can you able to say? Yes. Haplostyl, actinostyl, plectostyl, mixed protostyl. Clear? So these all the types have to be quoted that one on example. Haplostyl means selaginella. That's a good example. Actinostyl, lycopodium serratum. Plectostyl, lycopodium clavatum. Mixed protostyl. So that's the example is lycopodium zaranum. Lycopodium serrana. Understood now? So these are the different types of protostyl is present. The next one is siphonostyl. Okay. Already I told that sir. What does mean by siphonostyl? Do you remember that? Do you remember that children? Very good. Xylem is very good. Surrounded by phloria. But the central region they are present in a bit. Clear? So all of you see this diagram. Xylem is surrounded by phloem elements, but that is a central region they present in a pit. So that type of the steel is we are called the name is known as siphonostyl. Clear? This siphonostyl is also they come under in a, these are the types children. One is ectophloic siphonostyl, amphiphloic siphonostyl, solenostyl. Solenostyl also they come under in a three types. Extrophloic solenostyl. Ambifloic solenostyl, dictyostyl, eustyl, atactostyl, polycyclic steel. Okay? 
So all of you try to tell children what are the subtypes they come under in a siphonostin. Ectophoic siphonostin, amphiphloic siphonostin. The next one is solenostin. There also they come under repeated these two. Ectophoric solenostin, amphiphloic solenostin. Understood? Then the next one type is dictyostin, eustin, atactostin, polycyclic stin. Clear? Let us learn that one by one. First one is ectophoic siphonostin. Ectophoic siphonostin means the flowing is presence only that is the external side of the sinus. Clear? So all of you see children. That is the ectophoic siphonostin means central region the width is present. Here there is a flowing elements is only they presence in the external side of the sinus. That is we are called that is ectophloic solenostin. Sorry, ectophloic siphonostin. Understood, ma? Then amphifloic siphonostin. Amphifloic siphonostin means so all of you see this one. So here central region is with us there. Then xylem is there. Xylem, both the sides they presence in the phloem elements. Okay? Both the sides they presence in the phloem. That's a diverse we are called that's an amphifloic siphonostin. Clear? Yeah? Ectophloic siphonostin means so that the phloem is only they present outside of this external side of the sinus. Clear? Yeah? That is one of the good examples asmunda. That's another species example asmunda. Amphifloic siphonostin means so that's the central region with this presence, the xylem. The xylem, both the sides, they present in a phloem elements. Clear? That is known as amphifloic siphonostin. That's a good example of the species is a marsilia. Understood, children? Say yes or no? The next one, solenostin. The solenostin, so here, that's one whole is present in a that's a corresponding regions only that presents. So here, see, this is the solenostin. The solenostin, so in this area, one hole is there. That's a place, one perforated. Perforated means that's one of the hole is present. In that regions only, the origin of the leaf traces is starting. Here, that's the origin of the leaf traces is they start from the perforated places. Clear? So this type of the steel is we are called, that's a name is known as solenostin. Understood children? But what is mean by solenostin? The solenostin, that is the perforated. Perforated means one whole region is present children. At that place, that is the origin of this leaf traces. Okay? That is we are called, that's a solenostin. Then the solenostin also, that is they come under in a three types, subtypes children. One is ectophloic solenostin, amphifloic solenostin and a dictyostin. Let us learn this one by one. Ectophloic solenostin means, this is the same one only repeated here children. So what does mean by ectophloic solenostin? The ectophloic solenostin means, so in this region, the pith is present in the center, the sinus is surrounded by the phloem elements. The pith is they present in the center region, the sinus is surrounded by that phloem. Clear? So that is we are called the ectophloic solenostin. But the just you see this is on this one. Solenostin, ecto. Ecto means already you learned this is the ectophloic. But the center region is the pith is present. Then xylem, that xylem they surrounded by that is a phloem elements. Clear? That is steel, the steel is we are called, that is the name is known as ectophloic solenostin. Clear? That is a good example is asmunda. That is a good example is asmunda. Ambifloic solenostin. Ambifloic means the same one. Already you learned here now. The central region, the pith is present. Central region, the pith is present. Then the xylem is the presence in the xylem elements is surrounded by that is a phloem. Phloem is the presence in the both the sides. That is very very important. Both the sides is present. Okay. The xylem, the presence in the, the phloem elements that is surrounded by that is a two side is present. So that is we are called that is the amphifloic solenostin. 
That's a good example as two species. Adiantum pedatum. Adiantum pedatum. That's a species example for amphiflorin solidosity. Clear children? Yes. The next one is dictyostein. So this is the diagram. All of you see this one? Dictyostein. Okay. But what does mean by dictyostein means? The steel saw the separated in a several vascular bundle. See this one? This is a steel saw separated in a several vascular bundle. But that is a separated vascular bundle. Now this each strand is you are called the name is known as meristem. Okay. So the each the vascular bundles are they separated into several bundles. Separate. That each Bundles is we are called the name is the single one as we are called the name is known as meristems. The each single bundle is we are called the name is known as meristems. So what does mean by meristems? This is the one of the two more questions children. So all of you listen. The steel so they separated this. So what does mean by dictyostem? After that so you have to be learned that is one of the two more questions. What does mean by meristems? Okay. What does mean by meristems? Then what does mean by meristem? Try to learn. The steel saw they separated into that sir, several vascular strands. So that vascular strand so called. So here see this single single vascular strands are separated. Am I correct? So each the strand is here called the name is known as meristem. Clear? So this is the example is adiantum capillus. Adiantum capillus. And another one more is adiantum venaris. Venaris. Clear? So these are the two species examples they come under in a dictyostem. Clear? The next one is eustem. The steel is split into different, distinct, separated into collateral vascular bundle. So here I want to explain there is a collateral vascular bundle. Collateral vascular bundle means, what do you mean by collateral vascular bundle means? The xylem and the phloem, they present in the same radius, children. Xylem and the phloem, they present in the same radius. But the phloem elements, is, they present always in the outside direction. Clear? The phloem is the green color. The phloem is always, they present in the outside direction or externally only. Understood, children? So, this type of the steel is here called, the name is known as U steel. Clear? By U steel means, the steel is split into that's a collateral vascular bundle. Collateral vascular bundle, collateral, that's a word meaning only I said. Clear? Collateral means xylem and phloem, they present in the same radius, but the phloem is always the presence in the externally, outside direction. Clear children? So around that's a bit. So that's the type of the steel is here called the name is known as U steel. So this condition we are clearly see in that sir. Which type of the plants means? So that's a dicot stem. Okay. The dicot inhibitance plants. So that's a plants group is we are mainly they are classified into dicot and monocot plants. Do you know this name? Yes. So that is a dicot stem regions only. You can see this type of the vascular condition. So that is a U steel condition. Clear? The next one is A tacto steel. So this A tacto steel means so here. The steels are they separated into the steels are they separated into this collateral type. Of, here also there is a collateral type of vascular bundle. Collateral means already you know that one. Am I correct? The collateral vascular bundle that is scattered, that is embedded on a ground tissues. This is the full region is mentioning in a ground tissues. Area. This ground tissues area that is embedded form, the scattered forms only they present this type of vascular bundle. Which type of vascular bundle? Collateral vascular bundle. Understood children? Say so no? So that is the type of the steel is we are called the name is known as A tacto steel. Clear? This is the condition as available in that uh, species as a uh, uh, plants of monocot stems. Clear? That is a good example of A tacto stem. So that is the example is a monocot stem. Clear? The next one is polycyclic stem. So here the vascular tissues are the presence in them. That is a concentric type. One or more concentric type of vascular bundle they presence in that is a Way. So polycyclic steel. Polycyclic steel means the vascular bundles are the presence in a one or more concentric 
vascular bundles. Concentric means, so all of you will listen, ma. concentric means either xylem surrounded by phloem or phloem surrounded by xylem. Clear? So this is the central xylem means either xylem surrounds the phloem. The next term, phloem surrounds by the xylem. So this is the vascular bundle as we are called, the name is known as concentric vascular bundle. Understood? Conjoined concentric. These two are very very important terms, that, right? So that's why I am telling. So for this type, concentric vascular bundle means either xylem surrounds the phloem or phloem surrounds the xylem. Okay. So this type of the vascular bundle is so present in this steel. So that's the type of the steel this we are called that's a polycyclic steel. Okay. That's a type of the steel as we are called the polycyclic steel. So that's the example of the species is a teridium. Clear? That's the example of the species is a teridium. So these are the topics only today's we covered. So I am going to give one of this uh, homework portion children. So all of you listen. Huh? So in your textbook they are given that's a diagram portions. So diagram this one. The type of steels. Okay. Already I said that so you have to be make it on class note. Am I correct? So that note, so all of you please try to draw this diagram. Okay. So what are the special types are coming? So each type space you have to be made to draw the diagram. Understood children? Say yes or no ma? Yes. The next one, you must prepare one of this five mark steel type of steels. Clear? Two mark steel. What is steel? The next one is one of the five mark questions together. What are the type of steels? Clear? Diagram also very very important. Then previous there is a pteridophyte. So there you have to be prepared. There is a general characters. The letters. Just you prepare it. Two mark, one word and three mark based. Clear? Then one of this very very important. Another one question. Economic importance of pteridophyte. This also prepared. That is one of the five mark questions. So it's your duty is prepare two five mark question, remaining one word and two mark and three mark based. Will you able to do children? Say yes or no? Yes. Thank you students.